Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Rufaro. If you are African like me, you'll know that getting married is one of the most celebrated events in our culture. From the time that the lobola is paid to the time that you have your white wedding, if you decide to have one, you'll know that the whole thing is just chaotic. As the bride to be, you're made to feel like you're entering into this elite group of women in society. And you'll find that everyone around you is just so excited that is the people that love you of course they're just so excited that you're getting married that no one ever really takes time to prepare you for marriage I've been married for almost seven years and I wanted to share with you some of the things that I've learned that no one ever told me about about marriage and I hope that you can find something positive to take away from this and learn maybe I don't know just take something positive out of this whole situation <laughs> First things first, for my husband and I, our first year of marriage is actually very difficult. You know, they always say that the first year is where the honeymoon phase is. Well, I had a different experience. For us, our second year of marriage is when things just started happening. Our honeymoon phase just started to kick in. And it's been like that since then. You'll find that for us in our first year, I was expecting our first child. And we were trying to learn each other's habits learning how to manage finances together it was complicated you know reality just quickly hit hard for us and we didn't have that time to just sort of enjoy each other but after our first child came and we got over that phase you'll find that we were you know happier it's not always that things turn out the way that you expect it to be and i've learned that even the first year of marriage can have its own issues and it's not always that things just work out the way that you expect them to choosing a spouse it's probably one of the most important career decisions you can ever make in your life and just because you're married doesn't mean that all the hopes and dreams that you had before just go away you know and you'd find that for me and my husband we always used to talk about the things that we wanted to achieve and i remember also telling him that i wanted to start a lingerie business and i wanted to grow within the organization that we we're both working for at the time and i even spoke about it in one of my first videos about how he loaned me ten thousand US dollars to start a lingerie business and things just didn't go well during the time that when i was going through all of these things just very supportive and the moment that you decide to say i'm settled down with someone it's very important to have those hard discussions and just talk about the things that you know you want to pursue in life if it's to go back to school if it's to relocate if it's to have children like 10 kids if that's what you want to do you need to sit down and have those tough conversations because when the time comes for that person to honor what they said when they were dating, they need to be able to level up and show up and be there for you and support you. There's not one day that my husband ever made me feel guilty for the accomplishments that I made in my life or so far as far as we've been married. I've climbed up the corporate ladder, I got a second degree and we, we had you know so many things that we spoke about before we got married that I've been able to do at this point in time and it also hasn't made me feel guilty for losing the money that he loaned me. When you have someone that loves and respects you and understands that you're your own person with your own dreams, they are there for you and they support your vision. Each and every time you have an idea you want to pursue a goal, they're the first person who are there to cheer you on, they're not holding you back. If you choose a partner, if you choose someone that doesn't support your dreams, that makes me that makes you feel like your dreams don't matter, you'll be miserable for the rest of your life. Each and every time you have an idea, they're the first person to tell you that won't work. And you will start feeling like you're living a life that you didn't sign up for because yeah, you didn't sign up for that life. You had your own dreams and hopes prior to being married and you're expecting this person to be there for you 110% but every time they tell you, you know what, you're getting too excited, you're becoming too ambitious, you need to calm down that sort of vibe, then you won't be happy and you find that someone who is not focused, if you have a man that is not focused, or if you've got a partner that's not focused, they will take you down. They will not grow and you will not grow. And each and every time you want to succeed, 
there will be just be that barrier between you and your goals. I always used to hear that in-laws are mean, like you've got the mean mother-in-law and the mean sister-in-law, that sort of vibe. But I must say that I'm here to testify, guys. Not all in-laws are mean. <laughs> yes, there are some that are shady. You know the ones that I'm talking about, the ones that look like adults. <laughs> but don't exactly have a grown-up way of thinking that are very immature and always find ways of making you miserable or causing problems in your relationship. I have some awesome in-laws, guys. I don't want to mention names just in case someone thinks that I'm throwing shade at them if I forget to mention their name. But really, I've got some people that have been so kind to me that have welcomed me to the family and they're always there for me. Like literally when I have problems, I actually go to them for advice and support. When I see them, I just want to give them a hug, give them a kiss because they're just so awesome. And one thing that I've also learned about having that positive in-law relationship is that it goes two ways. Yes, sometimes people that are mean to you, but you also need to put in the work to make the relationship happen. Like it's not always just going to be on the person that's welcoming you into the family for for them to be, just be nice to you. You also need to show that you are open and you're welcome to have a good and positive relationship and also know your boundaries. And that's something that I've always known that my mom always used to tell me that know your boundaries, know your place. I just want to say, you know, there's some good people out there and it takes two to tango. You as well as the sister-in-law or the person coming into the family, you've got a part to play to also make sure that the relationships that you have remain positive and for those respected, uh, those boundaries that you respect on, on both sides. Another thing that I've learned so far in my marriage is that I need to learn to pick my battles wisely and know when to say things. We don't have to always fight about everything and we don't always have to agree on everything. My husband is always saying that if you're always in agreement with your spouse, then one of you is not thinking. You can't always just be saying yes, 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 yes. You know, communication is a two-way street and you can't always have one person that's speaking and the other one that's listening and not even having an opinion. And the moment that you have that type of relationship or that type of marriage, you will, as the wife, you you begin to feel like you're under underappreciated, like your husband doesn't see you as someone who thinks. You get it? And as a partner, you need to know that um, my wife also has her own views, my husband also has his own views. You need to be able to come to a place where you're in agreement without, without necessarily being constantly being overpowered. Our African culture makes it seem as if, you know, as the wife, you're just supposed to agree with everything that your husband says and just move on with your life. It makes it seem as if the husband is always right, that he never makes mistakes and what he says goes. But you find that each and every time you're always compromising and leaning in, you, sometimes it can leave you feeling small and inadequate, like you're not, you're not a person, you're not thinking. And even though I've got free reign in my marriage to be able to speak my mind, I've learned the one thing that's very important is that I need to say what I need to say with respect. And just know that he's a human being too, I need to be aware of his emotions, and he also needs to be aware of my emotions. So yeah, I've learned to pick my battles wisely and to know when, when to say things and just to know that my opinion matters. And it's not all married people, it's not all African men who behave in, in that type of way that makes you feel like you're not important, like your views are not important. One of the most important things that I've also learned is that I shouldn't be afraid or we shouldn't be afraid as, as partners to be able to talk about our finances. You know, there's some people who are in, in marriages where it's only the husband who makes the decisions about how their income is going to be spent and the wife has little say in, in any of that. And for me, it hasn't been the, it hasn't been that way. I've never been one to hide money. There, there are women out there that hide money from their husbands and husbands who hide money from their wives and they've got secret accounts and all those things that are happening. That, had, that, that hasn't been me. And I hope it's not my husband as well. But um, we've learned that each and every time when we, at the end of the month, or at the beginning of each month, we actually do take time to sit down and do our numbers. I don't like doing the numbers because all I'm seeing are 
you know the things that we need to save and make sure we attain not that it's a bad thing but i also like to spend you know in the marriage there's always that one person that spends more money than the other and in our case i have to admit that it's it's me i'm the one who spends more so he needs to sit down and sort of put a leash to say okay so this is what you can spend if you want to spoil yourself this month this is what you can spend but the decisions are made together they're not imposed on me and this works for us there are people that have a joint account and for them having a joint account it symbolizes togetherness that just hasn't been us we haven't had a joint account we've got separate accounts for different things and it works for us so different strokes for different folks do what works for you but i guess my point is that um, when you're growing up you always used to be told or always used to see uh, decisions being made by the, by the man in the household and the, 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 the wife or the mother is having little to say in how money is spent and even some people I know of some people who when their salary comes at the end of the month they give everything to their husband and the husband then decides what's going to happen the wife doesn't even know she gets a little you know a little allowance of some sort for her to be able to buy tomatoes or whatever it is but that's not us so if that's you and it works for you guys then that's awesome and I think that's one of the most important things and everything just boils down to communication it's all about how you decide to talk about issues that are important such as finances because those are the tough ones people people need to have those tough discussions around the numbers because after all money issues are one of the major contributors of divorce in in, in our century and we need to be very cognizant of, of that in the end, in our culture, marriage is considered to be an accomplishment. In our African culture, anyway, marriage is considered to be an accomplishment. And for me, it will only be an accomplishment, I guess, when we have our 20 year anniversary. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, this is the things that I've learned. I don't think you can ever really graduate from the University of Marriage. It's definitely a learning process. The things that I knew six years ago or whatever definitely don't apply now the things that i believed in then don't apply now and this quarantine period also has people feeling a certain type of way about their spouses because they're now spending a lot of time together and some people who weren't used to that are starting to discover oh my god is, you pick your nose i didn't know you did that you know <laughs> that sort of thing this is just an example but um yeah, there are things that are happening around us right now that can put pressure on marriages. And for me, I guess what is important to share some of the things that I've learned. I've been married for almost seven years. Our anniversary is in December and I'm excited about that. Hopefully this whole situation will be over so that maybe we can travel and spend some quality time together. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like and share with anyone that you believe might actually benefit from this. I had, I, I had no tea to spill, guys. I know sometimes people, when they do these videos, people are expecting them to talk about, you know, the, the, the awful things that they've learned, the miserable stuff. But um, for me, I'm really enjoying marriage. Like, I'm in love with that man, guys. Like, you have no idea. And... For me, marriage has just been a different experience from the things that I was expecting and I've just been happy. It's only the first year when things were hard, they were complicated. The honeymoon phase started in the second year and they haven't really changed since. And I hope that, um, you know, each and every person can find something that works for them. Oh, I've got a book that, oh yeah, before I forget, there's this book. Um, by Stormy Omashian, The Power of a Praying Wife, The Power of a Praying Parent, The Power of a Praying Woman. It's like a three in one collection. The last time I saw it in, in bookstores, I was going for like um, 53 Rand. I guess it's about four, four US dollars or something like that. But yeah, this book, if you're, if, you're, if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, this book will just help you. You know, it will just make things clear when you're going through this journey called life and you're married to someone because I've learned a lot of things in this book that have helped me to, to, to become the person that I am and it's also helped us in our marriage and I think it'll be a good one. Um, if you can find it somewhere, 
I don't know, um, I don't know if it's got an online version, probably it does have an online version, but this book is just awesome guys. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Love you all.